that prepared in live stream. Where have I gone? There we go. So I think that that's now streaming live. Well, I'll just be able to see that in a second. Let me see now. So if we go back there like that. And what I'll do is I'm going to try. I'm going to try anyway. Let me see. Right. It takes a while for this to come through onto my phone so I can see the comments, you see. If you go to my page, there we are. So that's okay. That's good. So um, what I'll do is I'll just click on this here. Overview. Now this seems to have gone. There we are. So we're actually live now, but we're just fiddling around and um, Brenda's here and Alexander, hello, nice to see you. I can't see you, but I can see your name. And Glyn, Glyn Ray's watching, hello Glyn. I hope you're keeping well. Now, I don't know why, but I don't seem to be able to see the comments. But um, let me just see if I can do this first. And then what I intend to do is because we're becoming really posh, Shaz. Really? Yeah, we're becoming posh. And this is a sort of attempt by me to be sensible and try and get a message out that might be helpful to people. But, you know, I can't be sensible. It's just not in my nature anymore. And it oh, never I was. It's just that <laughs> a long, for a long time, I was trying to be responsible and professional and all that sort of stuff, you know. Oh, yeah. look, there's, oh, good. Yellow loves. So, Denise, yellow, right? That's significant there. Let me just tune in and see what the significance of you misspelling that is. <laughs> the world now knows that you're mis ah. a, mis a misspeller. <laughs> Hello, Brenda. Right, so... We've got some comments up, and it's Shaz. It's nice to see you, love. Nice to see you. Do you yeah. mind me calling you love like that? Because some people who are woke, you know, they don't. They, they say things like, "Don't call me love." Right now, you, you tell by my face, I wouldn't even have to speak, Joe. You know, you, you'd know straight away. I, oh. I loved, I loved the term love, you know, because I never understood what love was at the end of the day. And it's really, really good to be. And just before we came on, you're talking about saying. Um, how up and down it's been. How up and down, how up and down it's been. And like yourself, I'm feeling pretty centered. Doesn't mean to say um, I'm not feeling it, but I've got the tools that help me uh, navigate it a little bit better today. And, and let's even say a year or so ago. Yeah, uh, same, um, same. I, I use, I think, the same tools, and we can go on and talk about those, you know, because yeah. I think the application of those particular tools could save this planet, I feel, you know, and not just sort of aligned with any particular ill at ease or disease, but I really feel that it would get to the heart of hearts of individuals and they would understand then, really. But, you know, it's like everything else, has, isn't it? You get a set of tools. You don't know how to use them properly straight away, so you've got to keep practising, haven't you, and making mistakes and stuff like that. I, I only ever feel, honestly, that I'm just scratching the surface of, and learning stuff, you know, um, yeah. because I'm still dyslexic, I'm still dyspraxic, and I'm still dyscalculic, and I'm, I'm telling the truth now because I, I am those things. Yeah. But I've come to accept it more. And strangely enough, when I accept those things in me, they seem to improve sort of automatically, you know, as if I'm shaming the devil, you know, because I was a very clumsy child, right? Yeah. And I used to get sort of shouted at all the time for, for my mother said, have you got dropsy again? Ah. You know, she'd say, you know, because I would pick things up and it's almost as if there was a delay between me sort of getting hold of it tightly Right, and it falling, do you know what I mean? And, yeah. I, and I still have that today, you know, well, especially when I'm washing the dishes, which isn't very often. <laughs> <laughs> so the whole idea, and thanks very much, this is the inaugural one of these because I've got a feeling to set this channel up. You know, I, I have another channel called, um, you know, it's called the I Am Approach Live, you know, or the I Am Connection Live. Um, but this this feels like it's it's more to do with people who've been through things, troubles yeah. and things yeah and and basically 
who've had some success, although they can share the, the failures as well, because I think that's important, but share the success story, right, uh, honestly and openly and stuff like that, you know. Yeah. So before we go, and in true Scouse fashion, what's your name and where do you come from? Number two. Number two. I don't know why I said number two there. There must be some uh, sacred numerical sort of significance to me saying number two to you. Well, I, I, I'd agree with you there, Joe. You wouldn't have wanted to meet number one. Well, you might have done back in the day. You know, me and you got on like an hour on fire. Yeah. I'm just listening to you in terms of the tools and just simple techniques. And, and, and I 1,000% agree with what you just said in terms of saving the world. Now, that sounds, it might sound a little bit dramatic and a little bit out there, but I can only go on my personal experience how it, it saved me want of a better way because that's my truth that's my truth um, and you know I used to get caught up in um, I'm really selective today I'm really really selective in terms of what I attach myself to regarding that it's some stuff because at one time um, you know the disturbance in me in terms of it I've heard people talk about you know 12 step fellowship for me is a way of life it's a way of living Okay, and I used to say people's opinion, and it's great, everyone can have an opinion, Joe, you know, but for someone who's very opinionated, right, I really can detach from people's opinions in terms of what they, they, what they say and what they, because it's just coming from their lens, you know, um, I was that person in, in terms of opinion, and that just showed me how closed my mind was, because my way was the only way, my way was the only way, and it's not like that today. And in terms of the 12 step program, you know, I often hear people having, having a say on that. It's just another programme. Well, for me, it's a reprogram. It, it, it's a reprogramming of all the stuff that sort of developed my personality and in terms of um, what I believed and what I was conditioned to believe. So for, for me, it's become a new way. It's a, it's a way of life, and you've said it before. It's a practice that I have. It's took me. I mean, I'm, t I'm into my 10 years in recovery. And I can see, I was only sitting there last night and I was just sort of contemplating the, how far I've come, really. How far I've come in terms of even how I view myself, right? I can really appreciate sitting here. I got caught up in a lot of stuff in terms, of, it's not about the story. It's not, that used to, I was terrified when I first came in. I was terrified, Joe. Uh, and I had to do a lot of work in terms of what was going on within me. I was so frightened that people would think I couldn't cope. Because underneath that was, I might need you, yeah? I might need you. And then I had to, isn't it funny I ended up in, in the place where I had to I had to learn to come out of that self-reliance in me. I had to let me, life depended on it. My life depended on that. And I don't see that, say that for effect or for drama. My life depends, so I was the extremist. I was the extreme in that. So the polarity of that was I had to learn to trust that this stuff works and it's a way of life. And it absolutely works for me. It's allowed me to breathe, you know, and <laughs> as far as what works for me, I, I'm a firm believer that, you know, once I started to straighten out mentally and emotionally, which I am, you know, um, the physical, now it's all about my physical. I even um, <laughs> was sitting here last night and, and you know, when you're first, you, you're coming in and you're in, you're in the company for a while. I was that, I want to say kid, because I was like a kid. I was that kid who came from nothing and, um, when I came into this, this new way of life and this new way of learning, I, I was getting voluntary work here, there, and everything. And I wanted to prove myself. I wanted to prove myself to the world. I wanted to prove myself to me. And I was thinking about this this morning. And I thought, Jesus Christ, even certain words had a huge effect on my nervous system. Yeah. On my, just on my nervous system. I remember getting this email. And I wanted to get everything right. And I wanted to show I could do this. And we apply ourselves, with, you know, we can achieve, uh, you know, big stuff. You know, we're driven in that way. I remember getting these emails and I'm getting everything done. Everything's all structured. And it was just one word immediately. That one word had this huge effect on me. And I was like, what is that? What's that disturbance? Why am I... And it was only when I was sitting there this morning it took me back to that time and I remember speaking to someone about it and it was just that immediately. That meant to me, if you don't get it done now, there's going to be a consequence. There's going to be a repercussion. 
So I, my, my nervous system was shot a bit when I come in here. When I come into, into recovery, when I say come in here, when I come in here, you know, it, it, it's, been a, it's been a long time. And I was just, again, sitting with myself today and I was just contemplating on how far I've come and I'm really starting to appreciate my childhood in terms of, I mean, when I say appreciate, and I'm not talking about the events and experiences, I'm talking about how I survived it. How I survived because I only give the tip sort of, um, of the horrors of your life because it's not about, it's not about um, where was me or it, because my experience was the only experience I had. So when I, when I started to uh, wake up, if you like, I couldn't understand what all the fuss was about. You know, in terms of what I'd come through, I, I was offered counselling at one time in early recovery. And I remember thinking, I was terrified. How dare you? How dare you ask me? If, if, because I really believed that I was okay. I believed I was okay. And the, the tools that and the techniques are all I know today, Joe, is like yourself, you know, um, my intention is it, it just blows me away, this, this, uh, this altruistic way of living, because that's what it is. That doesn't mean to say the practice of it, the application of it, it has been has been easy because it is as simple as it is. You know, I have learned through all my experiences we call it, in recovery, you know, um, I was blown away by the concept of that. There was no bosses. Well, I love that straight away. No bosses. There's no bosses because I was frightened of bosses. I was frightened of, um, you know, what do we call it? People in authority and all that stuff. I was frightened of all that. And I still didn't trust it. I hated it. There's no bosses in this fellowship of men and women. And I remember thinking, really? Now, that doesn't mean to say there's not personality, as you and me both know. But in terms of the... the, 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 the um, the, the concepts and what it's founded in, it's a, just a beautiful way of life for me. It's a beautiful way of living that has not only helped me to discover myself, it's given me a, it's given me a, it's given me a template. It's given me a template to be able to cope and manage my life in terms of the internal and the external, and that's come over time. And, and um, how I've learned to apply it if that makes sense. And I have, when I first come in in 2012, I'm going to share this because I was thinking about it so I'm thinking about dimensions and the third dimension, the fourth dimension. And to me, they're just layers because I can simultaneously be in 3D and 5 or whatever dimension you want to put. But I don't put a measurement on it, mate. I really, really don't. Because for me to start getting into all the technical stuff, it's like, nah, I need to keep it simple. When I first started meditating back in 2012, when I'm talking to someone who was so full of trauma, right, and come from this madness in my life, really, really dark time in my life, I was able to meditate. Now, that doesn't mean to say I was fully in my body, because looking back, I went. I wasn't fully in my body, Joseph, but this here was wide open. This was why I did. So was this. So was this. Yeah. Because the images and the downloads you get, they aren't, they, aren't, they aren't like pictures you get in your mind. You come from whatever. Di- so, and I was meditating yesterday and I was in this other dimension and I've really grown into these practices that I do. And within them now, I can move about and I can scratch me bum if I need to scratch me bum. And there I am in both dimensions. I'm in the physical. I'm in the physical. And my breath's in my body. Yeah, I am in these other realms, and there's been so much stuff that has gone on just in the last two years. It's just blown me away in terms of what's going on internally, collectively. And I know I'm a clear media. I know that there's a difference when it's my personal stuff that I've cleared a lot of, as opposed to when it's collective. Because I know when it's mine, there's a, there's a difference, there's a massive difference. But I absolutely know when you sit here today and go, yeah, you're a clearer. You're clearer, and there's other gifts that have been bestowed on me that have come from the divine, and I mean that, and that's within myself. There's other gifts that I'm I'm really aware of that I'm developing in myself, and I've always been there, but I've never really understood them. If that makes sense, and I am today, and I love absolutely, you know, like a lot of us, I love it. Well, everything you've said, and you don't have to go on, by the way, but um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank God. <laughs> but just just to put into perspective what this sort of channel is about it's about people who've been through hell really and have managed to come out of the other you know come out of it 
uh, by applying certain techniques, you know, and, and you're talking about a 12 step recovery program, which I've gone through myself, and I also apply the same tools. But um, it might be people who come on who have physical illness and they've used yeah. maybe, you know, movement therapies and exercise to help them, you know. So we'll be having, you know, it's basically people who are crippled in all sorts of ways, you know, physically, mentally, emotionally and spiritually, you know. Now, yeah. in, in, in a month's time, in, in actually one month's time, it will be 30 years, Shaz, since I've had a drink of alcohol. You know, and I, I, I say that not for big headedness. Um, and actually, I feel emotional saying it, but that's a miracle because mm -hmm. I, I, I was uh, in all sorts of medical establishments and uh, psychiatric departments yeah. receiving all sorts of different treatments, you know, to try and help me to fit into society and to act in a normal, sane, and balanced way. And I see now looking back that probably that wasn't the way forward, you yeah. know, because um, I always felt like I was being pushed back into some sort of skin that I was trying to escape from, you know, and my yeah. particular problem was alcohol, right? And I did take other substances, but not very many, to be honest with you. And al alcohol was my number one go-to for any sort of um, escape or oblivion, you know? Yeah. And it was in the first instances of taking alcohol when I was a young fella, it disinhibited me and it made me feel powerful and free. And that's what I got hooked on because I didn't particularly like the taste of much alcohol, yeah. except for Jameson's. I've got to be honest with you. If I had any money, right, I would always go for the Jameson's whiskey, you know. Oh. And if I didn't have any money, I'd go and steal it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's another story, but don't tell anybody. I hope nobody's listening. But, um, you know, and so... What happened was I went to Alcoholics Anonymous and it only took me nine years in AA to nah. understand what they were saying. Nine nah. years, Shaz. Nine. And Not people me. used to say to me, but you're so clever. And I wasn't, you know. I might have known all sorts of things to do with like biomedical sciences and stuff, but that yeah. was all looking outwards, you know. I was afraid, Shaz. I was afraid. And I can yeah. see you've put your name up here, rough and ready, Shaz. I understand that. <laughs> because this program is rough and ready, you know, and it's not going to be posh because it'll just be ordinary people talking about real stuff that they've gone through. Yeah. But what I was getting to is I was afraid to turn my eyes around and look inwards because that meant I had to face myself, right? And that's what saved my life in the end. I came to something called the rock bottom where they had nowhere else to go except in woods, you know. And I know, like you know, that the recovery from basically anything has got to start from the bottom up and from yeah. inside out. It's yeah. almost like you've got to go in and start to clean up your side of the street. Yeah. without pointing the finger at anybody else. And I've learned that very much, you know, yeah. and I'm still not free of that because I can feel that when I feel threatened, my finger goes out immediately to point to some external thing. But I really know more than anything else is, it's not the external thing that's causing the problem. It's the way that I'm emotionally processing all the information. Yeah. And I know now, and, and my, my watchword phrase is that if I'm feeling disturbed, right, it's the processing in me. It's in me. I need to stop, take a step back and saying, what's attaching here? What, what's, what's being threatened here? Yeah. And what's the correct way to go forward? And Shaz, most of the time now, it's to just let it go, find something joyful to do and carry on with my own life and minding my own business. And that's why I'm hoping that there won't be much controversy on this place. People can have a go if they want, you know, but it, the idea is not have you taken this or haven't you? Well, you should have because I've been should have all my life, not only by myself, but by yeah. other people, you yeah. know. Yeah. Now, the most important thing to me is today, because I, I was, I don't know about you, but I was a gross people pleaser me. I found it very, very hard if anybody ever asked me to do them a favor to say no. I yeah. would say immediately yes, even without knowing what it was, you know. And that's because I know now that I might have had loads of qualifications and all that nonsense, but about myself and about my self-worth, I didn't have any 
whatsoever, you yeah. know. And yeah. so I've learned that. You know, and there's been other things. I mean, every morning, Shaz, this is just me talking now about me. And, you know, other people might have different ways and that's fine by me. Right. If it's making you a more happy person, a more balanced person, a more calm person and a more helpful person, then whatever it is that you're doing, just do more of it then. Right. Yeah. Until it <laughs> stops working, then find out something else that works for you. You know, I've I've come to a very, very simple thing. If I put you off and something, are you, what are you doing? I'm getting me, me, uh, me thing for me, me thing for me thing. Hey, because this is <laughs> this is supposed to be supposed to be professional. This supposed to say like yeah. listening to every single word I'm saying and nodding. <laughs> so that's where I'm up to. I'm honest with myself today, and I wasn't. You know, I was very, very dishonest with myself. And I was even more dishonest with other people, you know, because I could lie at the drop of a hat, right? I was like, you know, um, what's Danny Kay, you know, when he was telling all those fantasy stories, everything was like a fantasy and a drama to me. And I, Shaz, I'm not that person anymore. And it's not that I've, I've picked up a different personality. I've just let go of a whole load of this false stuff, you know. And yeah. I, I didn't know about this before. You talk about a 12-step recovery program. Mm. I only had the same thoughts as you did just before coming on. It's not a program to me. It's a deprogram, you yeah. know. And what it does for me is it's almost like spotting something else that's not really me and letting go of it to allow this more authentic part of myself and you know more than anything else and I go on as well so you know we'll have to be going on for about five hours here but this is what I've learned is right that I didn't know I was never a bad person she has I've always wanted to help other people right yeah but now right I'm helping myself first and foremost you know and when I feel good about myself it, it's sort of it just helps me to want to want to help other people. That's it. Yeah. Over to you, kid. Wow. Yeah. So much in that. And do you know what I was doing? I, I was I was looking for my charger because you know because I'm that organised. Yeah. Yeah. And my battery no. might have gone. So that's me. Yeah. I'm getting me charger. There's just so much in that, wasn't there? Really. I mean, that's it. I even as a kid, that sensitivity in me. You know, when I found alcohol and I used drugs, I took anything. I took anything, even if it didn't like the effect of it. And that's powerful when you think about that. But it was better than being me, or it was better than feeling how I felt in my skin. And yet there was a lot of dysfunction in my childhood. And yet there was a lot of madness in my childhood. But at the end of the day, I, as that kid, I could not be around people. I was disturbed all my life. Yeah. Everything disturbed me, and I mean that. When I was away from the madness, and I was I was out on it because I was on the streets from a young age. I was on on the streets as this young. I had a lot of illnesses as a kid as well, an awful lot of illnesses as a kid. And I'll tell you something. I remember um, my mom giving me a note talking about physical stuff. Now I believe that the first time I drank alcohol at seven years of age. I always believed that that was the onset, but I can trace it before that even. My mom gave me a note. To go down to me granddad's. We lived in the same road as my dad's family. She gave me a note to go down to me granddad's. And what the note said was, Tucker, my back's gone. Have you got any painkillers? He gives me these, whatever they were, DFs, but strong, heavy duty uh, painkillers. He weren't for me, mum. They were for me. I had a hip problem as a kid. And I'd, I'd be in pain and I'd wake my mum up. My mum was a single mum. This, is, this isn't anything against my mum. But she'd give them to me and I remember the effect of it like it was yesterday. Oh, my God, I felt like I'd arrived. So then I learned to manipulate to get that. I learned to lie and distort the truth from a young age. And it wasn't because I was bad. It was because I was wanting to escape either me or the pain I was in, whether that was physical. I was always prey to my emotions. Always and to other people. So when I found stuff that worked for me, I medicated myself with it. And I sit here and say I loved it for many years until it's until it stopped working and um it taught me to the cleaners basically. And in terms of what you just shared there around um, you know, what I've got from you know the, the, the 12-step program, it's given me 
a new set of eyes. It isn't just an overhaul. When I, I remember saying, so what do, what do I have to change? Well, everything. Yeah. And I remember thinking, yeah, I'll be all right. I'll be all right. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll do this. I didn't understand at that time, Joe, what that meant in terms of how my head and where the centers in my head and how that persecuted me all my life. You talk about blame. I was always blaming or I was always blaming me. So it's two sides. It's, 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 it's just as damaging whether I'm blaming out there or I'm blaming me. This bully in my head dictated and drove me to... to um... <laughs> so in terms of that stuff, I, I had a lot to work through and a lot of healing to do. And still am. Still am. You know, I, I sit here and... <laughs> It is a miracle we're both sitting here, isn't it? It's a, it's a miracle. I mean, I, I ended up in the doorway. Um, and I tell you something, I had tried to take my life many times. I was a self-harmer. I was a self because I couldn't wait how why I kept repeating the same thing over and over. It'd be going into institution after institution, right through my teens, right to prison. And I share that because that's where it is. But I was never a bad person. And even in the end, in that doorway, I, I didn't want to die, New Joe. I had this taste for life. I'd never really lived life. So I had this deep down yearning to experience life. You know, my arms, the, the self arm I used to do, that was just a way of getting a little temporary, temporary relief from me when I was in the circumstances that I was in. So I ate all them boxes. I ticked all them boxes for all them labels that I was given. So for me to have gone full circle from that, I mean, I call these my little uh, roadmaps to, yeah. to the galaxies now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's changed terms, right, yeah. yeah. In, in terms of where I am today, just even that, you know, the little techniques I can pause when agitated and breathe actually today. Okay, I can think before I open this. Think, think, think before I give my power away. Because that's what I did. I did that all my life. All my life. I didn't know when I was running around as this rag-ass lunatic kid on the street, surviving, right? Fighting. I didn't know I was frightened, Joe. I did not know that I was frightened. When you, you were talking about saying no to people, frightened of upsetting people, eggshells around people, frightened of what they're going to think of me. All that has given me... A, the awareness is key. It's an awareness for me. I thank you, God. And God for me is just good all in direction. My higher self comes in. And honestly, a lot of it is to do with practicality. Because if it's not practical, it's not spiritual. My clothes, my friend taught me that one. Mm. It's not practical, Shaq. It ain't spiritual. You know, um, feet on the ground, feet on the ground. You can have your head in the clouds as long as them, them feet are on the ground. And I absolutely love that, you know, I have that window now. And I was thinking about the word tolerance. <laughs> tolerance. Jesus, I, I couldn't tolerate anything. As I said before, even certain words would trigger me. Not just people. Tolerance. Now I have that. I have a tolerance for a lot of stuff because I use simple techniques that help me do that. And I've worked through a lot of my emotional baggage. And, you know, that doesn't mean to say I don't feel stuff because I absolutely do. But I know the difference today yeah. in giving myself permission. I had to learn to, I had to repair myself, you know. See, and, see I, I, well, I'm nodding, you know, it's, it's, it's one of these conversations where I'm just nodding because I can identify, you know. And, and there's always something new to let go of, to learn. That's the way I feel, you know. And every time I get a trigger or a hook goes in me, right, yeah. it's highlighting because there's a, there's a phrase, isn't there, that pain is the touchstone of our recovery. And I understand what that means now because pain to me, in all the medical stuff I've done as well, pain is an obstruction to the flow of vital energy through our bodies. And yes. that vital energy, some people would call that chi or yeah. prana, but some people call that spirit or vitality. And I honestly believe that, that all pain, all illness in the physical body is initially as an obstruction, you know. Now, Louise Hay wrote all sorts of books about this because she believed that all these things actually started in consciousness first or the mind, you know. Now, when I first heard that, I thought, what a load of old baloney, you know what I mean? Uh, but I'm beginning to see now 
that 1% of what we think we know is going on here in this 3D world, right? There's 99% of stuff going on in invisible realms over which generally we've got no idea about whatsoever. And that's what I found out, Shaz. And it's it's like you. It's led me into the fields of quantum physics and all yeah. that and yeah. different dimensions, you know. And I, I mean, this program isn't for that really, but, but that's where I'm up to now in my mind. You know, yeah. I sit there and things drop in from, if you like, different <laughs> dimensions. You know, if It depends who I'm talking to. I was talking to some people. I've been talking about portals opening now and consciousness streams and stuff like yeah. that. But it's almost like my head has just like gone bloop and opened. And there's all sorts of information flying in from different directions. But it's more ordered now. It's almost as if I'm getting some choice now. Because beforehand, yes. it was yes. like schizophrenia to me. You know, and that I, I like you, I made a couple of really good attempts to do myself in. And I was that ill, Shaz. I mean, talk about self-harm. I've done the same thing. I've got scars on my hands and uh, on my arms. But I used to run at the wall as fast as I could and smash my head against the wall, yeah. right, yeah. to try and knock myself out, to let all this stuff out, because I didn't know what was going on with me. Now, the most important thing in my life is that I maintain my sobriety. And sobriety to me, Shaz, has got little to do with drinking, yeah. right? It's to do with emotional state. And I don't mean a forced, repressed, suppressed, compressed emotional state. That's all about swallowing down stuff that's coming up. This is something where I have to let go of all the stuff that's bothering me. And it's called mindfulness, this, but it should be called heartfulness, I think. But yeah. It's almost like letting everything go, let go and let love, or, or let go and let God, or let go and let nature take its course. It's letting everything go and allow myself to settle down into a sort of a calm place and then making the inquiry, what is it that I need to learn from this situation? And that's how I'm living my life now. It's become very, very simple for me that if I'm disturbed, I need to take a step back, reset me. I don't reset myself. I reset myself by letting go. And I sort of get reset um, automatically, if you like, into this neutral space, you know, and that's yeah. where the information comes through. It's almost like a new channel opens up between these two polarities yeah. and the information that I need comes up one breath at a time, one moment at a time, and just in the nick of time. Hey, that was like almost poetic. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to tape that and put that up as a little clip. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's in, you know, what you just said there in terms of physical pain, it always starts with consciousness. Now, I was thinking a similar thing, like along similar lines yesterday, I was thinking, okay, because there's a couple of things I was born with, and I had a daughter who was also born with a um, couple of syndromes and what have you. And it got me thinking, you know, um, the hip stuff, you know, when I was born with that, I was, well, it was, it was symptomatic when I got to the age of five. Was I born with it? Was that rooted in my own mother's consciousness that when I was in the womb? Or was it a result of um, being abused as a child? You know, and I'll say it sexually, I'm all right saying that today, but I'm shame attached to it. So, in terms of consciousness and physical stuff, I understand it. I understand it to a certain degree, Joe. I'm mean, being honest with you. I understand it to a certain degree. I think if we, if we focus on it, I believe it can, you know, it can, what's the word? It can get worse, if you like. It can get worse. And I do believe a lot of it is, it's, it's interesting this because last year I spent a lot of time um, Do you help me a lot, you know, with the breath work. You know, I started to do this breath work and I've got a friend, you know, Kim, you know, my friend Kim. I was doing a lot, of spending a lot of time in nature last year and doing a lot of breath work, being rooted to Gaia and, and the planet and taking my breath right into parts of my body that it had and just intuitively doing this stuff. But there was times when, my breath would get to certain places in my body and I would start, I was, I was basically bordering seizure, convulsion, yeah. Yeah. right? And I'd feel this, and I'd just start going like that. And then when I spoke to a friend, she said, well, she'd been doing a bit of research, I'm not a researcher, she'd been doing a bit of research around trauma and I think it was Peter Levine and she said, have you never seen an animal 
when the playing dead or they've been attacked. She said, they go into that lane shaking. She said, I believe that that's what's happened with you. So I believe I've cleared quite a, a good chunk of trauma that's been stored and stuck in my physical. There'd be days later, then I'd be going into this lane, these places where I just feel this stuff wanting to come up, where I'd be crying, just, just, and the relief I got from it. But you see, there's years and years and years, and layers and layers and layers. So where I am in terms of that, um, I've fully cleared everything. I don't know. The honest truth is I don't know. See, I, when, I'm, when you're talking about this now, this is what happens to me is when we're in line and talking about something, I get like a big thing goes up my spine, yeah. you know, and I have a picture which I've made up myself is like it's some sort of a great big being is coming behind me with wings like that. So to me, because I was brought up in the, you know, the Irish Catholic, Roman Catholic yeah. faith, it's an archangel, you know, might as well have a good archangel looking after me, you know. So um, this thing comes around me with wings and it gives me a bit of a snuggly feeling and I get this, this thing. But I know now, and we know Sifu Boggy, don't we? Now, yeah. Sifu Boggy is an expert on de-obstructing energy blockages, and he will show you breathing techniques and movement techniques, because my understanding, Shaz, is, and I, it could be wrong, and it doesn't matter if I'm wrong, you know, but I think now what's happening is it's almost like that energy body has been trying to work through us. Now, in order to do that, see, look, here it comes in a big way yeah. now. So, so it's working through us. And so what we have to do is our outer self, our personality self, our ego self has to almost surrender. And I, I say this sort of request. I say, you know, go on then, have me big boy, do what you've got to do, right? And let it get done. And I'm like you is, sometimes I can drop into such a deep state of relaxation. And it's almost like I feel like worms going through my body. And then I'll, I'll sort of cry you know, for, yeah. for no reason. And it's almost like big sobbing tears where I'm, I'm crying my leg off, but also I'm watching it at the same time. You know, there's Absolutely. all these funny things happening, you know, so, so, you know, so that to me means that there are different dimensions of me that yeah. have the ability to see from all sorts of different angles. But the most important thing to me now is, right, is to let go and to try and move in the direction. Now, if that's what's being called in religious circles, being moved by spirit, then so be it, you know. But I trust this process now, Shaz, yeah. because, yeah. because I was brought up with visions of the devil and I'm being possessed and all these things, you know. And yeah. I'm not knocking that. If people believe that, that's fine. Yeah. I don't believe that anymore. No. But because I was brought up in a very religious way, I was the chief altar boy, I went off to train to be a priest and all that. So it was very, very deeply programmed in me, this religious thing. And when I went through this process of letting stuff go, I had to drop the religious side of things, not to say that it won't come back, but I've had to sort of dispense with that and just go with a feeling now rather than some sort of a, a dogma, no, if you like yeah, that, yeah. you know, and, and I don't want people to think that I'm knocking it because like I said before, if it works for you, it makes you a nicer person and more helpful and get happier Then carry on by all means, you know, but, but, you know, I like the phrase, and this probably will upset some people, you know, that I learned that religion was for people who were afraid to go to hell, but spirituality was for people who'd already yeah. been there, you know, and that's the way I see it now. I've been to hell, love, you know, yeah. and I'm going through a purgatorial process, if you like, like a purgative, where, where bits of me of a pay attention, right, are showing up to be yeah. clean, cleansed and let go of. Yeah. Sorry for going on, but I just like uh, could feel. No, it. you're not going on. You're not going. You're not going on at all. I mean, yeah, and I agree with that. And <laughs> different aspects of myself, and it, it's um, it's been you know it's been happening for a while now. But I really feel a sense of peace going on. I really do feel this sense of peace going on because I just feel everything is unfolding as and when it's meant to unfold. And whatever your experience is, your experience. I mean, I. I I remember back, I don't even know what year it was, Joe, before I ended up losing the home and, and the kids and all the rest of it. But I remember having my nine-year-old son, and I may have shared this with you before, but however, it's coming in. Um, and I remember I had this drink, and I'm trying to get this drink in, and I couldn't get it in. And I'm trying to hide it from my son, who, who, who was um, nine at the time. 
And I remember trying to get, I couldn't get this drink in, I couldn't get it in, so here I am, I'm, I'm in withdrawal. The next thing, just prior to um, to having a seizure, an alcohol seizure in front of my child, yeah. what came across the, the room to me was this gold orb, right? And this is way before I'd come into recovery, and it floated right up to me, came right over to me. And as it got closer, I'd just seen my face looking at me. So it was like an outer body. So... <laughs> Fast forward a bit, I thought, I believe, I believe we do have higher dimensional aspects, right? Whether you want to look at it as your future self or you want to give it a name. But because of um, all the numerology stuff and, and, and the balancing stuff, and I, I tend to get a lot to do with Mesotron and the earlier meditations. So I feel that, that presence when it comes in. You know, I feel that when it comes in. And then I got a deck of cards bought for me with Metatron from someone holding this gold gold up. Now, I don't know whether that was the macabre spinning that fast. You know, I'm just trying to make sense of what I've experienced over the years. So I absolutely believe the different aspects of myself that show up when, as and when I need it to. Then later on, I can join Dot, and I've got many experiences like that. Into, even in the dream state, the, the, I think it was about six months ago, I kept having these dreams where I'm showing up as my higher self. And, and one of them, I was marrying, I was being at the marriage ceremony. And I do believe it's, you know, the embodiment of the masculine feminine and I'm coming into that unity within myself. Yeah. And these diamond rosary were placed upon my breast there. Now, what does I make of that? Do I believe we are stepping into that 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 that, that, that Christ? Christ consciousness. Yeah, I do. Absolutely, I do. So my higher self shows up and gives me what I need in terms of my own understanding of what I believe is, is happening as a collective. And it just throws me away. It absolutely astounds me. See, who would have thought, Aishas? I mean, that we'd be doing this, right? You know, talking about uh, metatronics, because basically, you know, and, you know, because... Where, where my journey took me was back to the angels and back to the archangels. And, you know, and people said, oh, he's going back. He's a religious nut. No, I couldn't be further from the truth. This is science to me. This is quantum science, right? Yeah. And I do believe that there was an obstruction, actually, just above Metatron that has now opened up again. We've been restored to 12 full potentials of the human being, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there's also another three dimensions up there, 13, 14, and 15, that represents, if you like, a holy trinity of, hum of, of divine intelligence, right? That's actually guiding us now through this process. Because I I've spoken to you about it before, is all my life I've had this vision Right, yeah. of the sacred feminine, right. Yes. And where it's led me is, you know, and, and, and I don't go and look in books of this. I'm just no. sitting there suddenly, didn't he come, you know? And so I've had all this stuff about ancient Egypt, right? Yes. C yes. Coming up, south okay. of France, right? <laughs> south yes. of France, yes. right? Into <laughs> Glastonbury, right? From My Glastonbury God. over to Ireland and then up to Scotland, you see. Now, I'm sitting there thinking, Stop it. Stop oh. it. <laughs> yeah, honest oh my to God. God. I, I've never told you about this before, but and, and that's to me is the rose line. And I've yeah. talked to loads of other people, and, and they the say, and, yeah. I, and I've had this thing as well. First of all, in the first half of my life was the uh, Our Lady, you know, the blue and white version, right? Yes. <laughs> and then it swapped then into Mary Magdalene, you see. And so I've been I've been guided, in fact, it's here now in a big way. Yeah. I've been guided, right, all my life by this energy, and I know that now. Now, yeah. whether that's a vocation, because vocation means to be called, doesn't it? That's what vocation is. This this must be my vocation. But what, what's being given to me is that my my masculine side, because I've always been a bit of a wimp, you know what I mean? A bit I've been a bit sort of feminine in my maleness, really, you know. And and that that that, that sort of um that misguided me a lot when I was young because I didn't know which way to, anyway, that's another story, you know. But but the thing about it now is it's almost like a whole um aspect of me is coming through with much more strength and i can only presume that this is the sacred masculine coming through now yeah. right almost as a as a sort of um a guardian if you like for the sensitive nurturing sacred feminine now yeah. shaz i didn't know i was going to talk about this but 
that's what happens to me every single day. All this stuff's coming in. I'm thinking, <laughs> that's very kind of you. Thanks. How am I going to translate that into neuroscience so I can carry this message? <laughs> and again, it's easy, Joe. It's just the yin and the yang of the autonomic yeah. nervous yeah. system. That's exactly and what it is. Oh, my God. I'm, do you know what? I really, I'm really am having to practice one of them tools. You know, bridling mouth goes apart as you come in so many well, times. No it's just like you, you're on the exact same page. The, 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 the Egyptian, all of it, what you've just, what you, is where my, no, I, I don't look into boots and stuff. It just comes to me. It just, and I believe where you just shared, you were like, you know, that archetypical um, oppressed feminine, yeah. Yeah? yeah? I was the archetypical masculine, too yeah. much of that. Yeah. So, you know, in terms of that, and that's why I said before, I've really had to learn to repair it myself from both aspects. And we, we know the higher mind and the, and the heart coherence and all that stuff. That's where I'm at with it. That is the, I, that's where we're at with it. And as a collective, all they can say is, I mean, Jesus Christ, the last, um, the heart palpitations, that's what I wanted to ask you. Uh, from the 2nd of uh, February, right? Now, I don't read into too much. I just really have my own experiences around stuff. So the 2nd of February, this energy that I've, because I was getting a lot of um, synthetic energies coming in for, for a while there uh, last year. And I didn't know whether that was it. I couldn't, I couldn't. Um, pinpointed whether it was to do with the 5G mass. I don't know, to be honest with you, but the tone was completely different to, to, to the tones that come in from, from the energies and, and the, the human resonance and all the rest of it. But from around the 2nd of February, the, the energies have almost felt like new to me, right? And I've been getting, and I'm going to go and get checked out with a GP. As much as, you know, I have my opinions around stuff, I'm, I'm, I'm quite sensible today. I'm quite sad, sad, sad today, Joe. But I've been getting these palpitations, and I mean ongoing palpitations, right? And it's funny. I'm going to bring it in. You, you know Michelle Muller? Yeah. yeah. She passed on the second. Yeah. yeah. Now, there was many times she'd said to me, I've just got a picture here. Um, there was many times she'd said to me, we're going to have to meet up, me, you and Joe. She, 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 she wanted that, she had that intention that the three of us were going to meet up. Anyway, she's been quite, um, she's been quite active around me because we were meant to meet up a week, a week or so before and we were going to do the, Al the spine of Albion. We were going to walk because there'd been the stuff around the spine and the auto, the auto, I can't say it, the nervous system and all the rest of it. And there's been a lot of activity here at the back as well. But I've been getting these palpitations you know in my heart and I'm very centered and I'm, I'm in my body and I you know I'm very uh, breath and breath I'm very grounded but these palpitations that I've been getting that I'm like what is this going on here and I think Denise Chadwick mentioned it a couple of days ago I, I went on to I just got the, the guidance to go on to the um, Denise's show and got me confirmation on there in terms of other people experience and that stuff so yeah my feeling because you I mean you know i don't know whether the people who are listening do you know but i i had um yes. two heart attacks you know one yes. one week which, which was so-called mild heart attack it was heart attack and, then the, the it, second, yeah. and the week the week later right it nearly saw me off you know and the circumstances yeah. were so bizarre but the point about it is i've looked after my body as best i can yeah. right and you know i just completed my 17th marathon Chaz, you know i know but, you but, have, but yeah. you know so so in that regard i think it was a toxic thing but i i get told now whether or not this is true because i'm not perfect i'm still learning myself you know but mm -hmm. i got told joe that was to actually clear you at a deeper level and unblock you unblock you well, yeah. at a very deep level and it felt like that because yeah. when it was happening to me I could breathe really clearly and I felt yeah. okay and then the other side of me was the sweat was pouring off me and I was like dying you know so yeah. I don't know Shaz so yeah. I would always say you know because I'm not a doctor of medicine I'm a doctor in medicine and for people who don't know that means I did a PhD in medicine and basically I for seven years I looked at people's state of mind and how it directly impacted upon the way their heart works that's yeah. what my specialist area is supposedly do i know everything about it do i like hell i'm just learning more and more all the time now since i've been put in this position of becoming a patient right i've learned so much more and this is what i've learned 
everything's connected, right? Even your big toe can send information to your heart, right? Really? And be trying to, you know, so this is what I've learned is, and what's become important to me is the nutritional aspects and how the gut yes. and yes. the heart and yes. the head are so centrally connected with one another. To me, when I say I'm clean and sober, I really mean that. I'm clean and sober. I'm very, very careful about what I digest and ingest and what gets injected into me. I'm very, very clean in that regard, right? You know, <laughs> but, you know, and so I don't know what I'm trying to say other than it's always worthwhile because don't forget medicine has got a load of fantastic things to Absolutely. offer people as well. Absolutely. So, this is not about fighting because it says, doesn't it, for by this time we have ceased fighting Fight anybody them. or anything. That doesn't mean that actions don't get taken, but they don't get taken as a consequence of emotional reactivity because oh, yeah. that, as far as I'm concerned, is what the fight means. So yeah. I step back, settle down, and then I'll get a feeling, no, you do need to take an action on this, Joe, or you don't. And that's where it is. Shaz, as far as I'm concerned, if I can't go forward and I can't go back, then I'm still blocked in some sort of a way. I've got yeah. to be able to move in every single direction to be fully useful. I don't know what I'm going on about, so I'm going to pass over to you again. Look, 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 I can always tell when I'm on one because I start frothing at the mouth and everything. That's not very professional, is it? Thank God for, for, for not non-professional. Yeah, no, and I, I absolutely agree with you there, Joe, because I'm probably the healthiest I've ever been. I packed in smoking the 21st of December 2020, so I'm 14 months smoking free. And you know what? I, I remember sitting with that, and, and I was going over how things are so habitual with us, you know, and as a species, we're so predictable until we become awake and aware of, 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 of who we are and all that stuff. But I remember this craving with this cigarette, and I just remember sitting sitting with it and just observing the energetic of it and just knowing this will pass. So, but in terms of this thing, um, I do believe what you just shared there because the years went up, right? <laughs> I, I feel it on such a deep level when you said you were having a really deep clear out or your higher self or whatever came in to give you that information. I've just felt that on a, on a deep level. And I do believe that that's what's going on with myself as well, with this heart stuff. I mean, I'm in a lot of grief and a lot of pain. The, the planet, the planet is going through such, it's going so fast as well. It is intense at times. It's intense at times. So like yourself, I just have to sort of breathe into it and feel my way into it. And I'm not frightened by it. I'm not frightened by it one iota. Does that make me a bit... No, I don't believe it does. I just believe whatever's meant to be is gonna is gonna happen. But where am I in? Where am I in that? And I, I thought the same before. Okay, what are we gonna talk about on this show? Well, don't start trying to make anything up in your head, chat. Practice your humility and trust here. You know, it's gonna come from the heart. It's gonna come from the heart and it unfolds exactly as it's meant to, to unfold and, and, and that's enough, isn't it? Where am I of, ma of maximum use? Some days that is just being with me, yeah? In order for me, like you shared earlier, to be able to um, to give from the cup off, you know, because if, if I don't look after myself in it, then I'm, I'm coming from a place of, yeah. See, I, I have a thing, a phrase called punching with love. Yeah. Right. You know, and, you know, if you've got an idea that, you know, that's a wrong thing to say and it signifies some sort of violence, you know, sometimes yeah. when somebody's drowning, right, and you swim out to them, if you get too oh. close, they can drag you down and kill you as well. And sometimes you have to get close enough to knock them out, right, and then drag them back to the drag them. Yeah, drag them back to the shore while they're unconscious and then let them come round on the beach, you know. And I do feel that sometimes, you know, that we are guided, right, yeah. to actually almost like strike out with some sort of thing. And it, it just happens because because my head, my ego, which is still in play all the time, it's saying, oh, I'll go there and I'll say this in a nice way, you know, like ducking and diving and dodging and weaving and planning, right? Yeah. <laughs> and you get there. It never turns out the way my Ever. head plans it. Ever, ever, ever. <laughs> ever, thank God, isn't it? Yeah. And that's where you learn to get yourself out of the way and trust in the process of yeah. what's unfolding, isn't it? Yeah. Well, Listen, yeah. Love, let me ask you this question. We've got about six minutes to go. 
there's no problem with going over, but if I was going to ask you, have you got any simple, straightforward, for people who don't, don't, under, don't know about 12-step recovery programs and all that, simple, straightforward, practical things that they could do, simple stuff, does, is, is anything coming to mind at all that might help anybody in any particular difficulty? In terms of in any difficulty, well, yeah, yeah. that's quite a aim. Okay. When I was a 12 step program. Yeah, without a yes, self so the, Well, first and foremost, what's come to mind is, is um, self care, honesty, being honest about where you are in life and, and, and in terms of maybe just having a look up. If you're feeling stuck, what's going on there in terms of what's blocking you? Your fears, is it is it circumstances, is it life? Reach out to other people. See, that's what came to me is honesty. It came down to honesty, self-honesty, not particularly going to tell your story about all the things that you've done and all that. It's yeah. first of all sitting with yourself, putting your hand on your heart like that and saying, Where well, am that. I being dishonest with myself? And yeah. when you start to look at stuff, if you get like emotional grumbles and everything else stay there because that's the bit that you need to look at because yeah. yeah. i say to the patient because i see patients and stuff like that i say to the patients what's the one thing not nothing to do with like your diabetes or your kidney disease or anything like that forget all that forget all that what's the one thing that plays on your mind more than anything else and it yeah. may be seemingly completely unrelated to anything physical but you know what, Shaz? That'll be the thing that's driving the disturbance, that's driving the... So, and they look at me soft, like as if to say, what's he asking me this for? You know, and, and then th this is why I love this, like if you like social prescribing in the correct way, not in any controlled way, but sometimes sending somebody to a financial advisor to yeah. get them to write let letters to say to debt people, can you give us a few more? Sometimes the peace of mind they get from that, it's almost like it opens yeah. up and then they think, but what, what it does though, Shaz, is, it also engenders a sense of trust then with, with you. So with you, it's like it's like a heart-to-heart -heart connection where two people who are just like ordinary people talking, right, uh, about things that really matter, you know. And, and, and I that's think it, yeah, that's it, isn't it? It's that the practicalities. And it's funny because just earlier on, I'm on the phone to someone, right? And, and it's, it's also like breaking down what's your biggest disturbance today in terms of what you can do practically. And sometimes, and this was around financial and um, where they're living. Okay, so I said, just sit down and let's make a list of what you can do in order for your next right action. To, to, to help you get through what you need to get just little bite-sized pieces bite and even that around the honesty the self-honesty stuff Joe I didn't even know when you know you spoke about people pleasing before you know or if someone would say to me how are you doing and I'd say oh, oh I'm great I didn't know I was being dishonest when you know because I was frightened so it is about sitting with yourself and, and questioning um, what's going on for you and, and looking at it honestly isn't it it's, it's it's huge and then having that humility and I know we bandy that word around because it can feel when you're new to this stuff it can feel quite humiliating it can but once we get used to it there's a huge freedom in it getting that the, getting the humility to say you know what I'm not all right mate I'm not okay can you help me by That's being honest and open yeah that's what I was going to say, because I know Shaz, and I've never met you physically. We only live over the water, but we will do soon. We right? will. But I, could, I know that I could contact you and just open myself up totally and talk about anything at all. Yeah. I know that. Because at some level, we have a deeper, deeper soul connection in some way. Yeah. And yeah. I have that with people. And I'm not dishonest about that. So what I tend to do now is I just feel, right, with me heart. And I get it. It's almost like sending out a sonar, you know, bloop. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Yeah. And if really? I get a boom, yeah. if I get one of them back, right, I've sort of <laughs> I've sort of connected at a soul level, yeah. right? And it sort of tells me that I can trust this person. But right, most of the time, no, she has 99% of the time, it's like bloop, bloop, doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo. step aside, <laughs> son, turn go in another, you know, and, and so mostly it's a high-pitched siren that comes up with, well, no, no. 
you know, and that's how <laughs> I live my life now, you know, yeah. because I was taken in by clever words. I was no. taken in by suits. I was taken in by all that. She has no. most of the time I'm not anymore because this has become what's called a BS detector now. And yeah. it sends out a radar and then I have to listen to the signals that's coming back, you know. Isn't it funny? Isn't it funny? I said not long ago there to um, a close mouth friend who'd been really, really good for me um, last year. And she thought it was hilarious. I said, you're telling me I'm highly intuitive. How come someone who's so highly intuitive be so gullible at the same time? Someone who survived on the streets thinking she was, well, streetwise and all of the above, but can be took in so easily. I, I'd say, and and you know that's the thing about pride as well with me is oh. I go look, I just oh. I got I just got caught again, and my own head says to me, "Wouldn't you think after practicing this for so long <laughs> that you'd be perfect at this?" Yeah, now, you know, yeah, but yeah. I laugh about it now because right, oh, it's enough, like yeah. a joke, and you know. They call me Dr. Lightheart, but there's a part of me that's probably one of the most serious men on the planet. You know what I mean? And I feel strongly and I feel serious about, I have got a message to carry. And 30 yeah. years ago, Shaz, yeah. yeah, 30 years ago, I made a promise, right? And the promise was to try and grow an understanding and effectiveness of carrying this message. Mm -hmm. And the message is for everybody listening is what you're looking for is yeah. in there it's in Ooh. there and that's that move from your instinct initially through intellect which is the tricky dicky intellectual pride all the Fine knowledge line. that you gain yeah Fine it, line, yes. it's to let go of that and go inwards to your intuition and then generally speaking when it moves further it all becomes inspirational then and that's where yeah. i feel myself i'm sort of moving up and I'm getting more insights, if you like, all the time, yeah. you know. Yeah, beautiful. So listen, love, I haven't met you physically, but I love you like mad. I love you, I, you know, I um, just do. And that's all there is to it, you know. And um, Love you too, Joe. And thank you very much indeed for coming on here. And, and I hope the people who've, um, you know, who've, who've come on get something from it. And if they don't, they don't. But, you know, we'll, we'll see. So... Uh, Hey, the little girl in me is like, I feel dead special because I was the first guest. <laughs> yeah. You are, yeah. You are special. It's an honor. It's an hey, honor. Well, well see, sometimes, yeah, yeah. There's no such thing as special, but you are certainly, Shaz. Unique. Unique. <laughs> <laughs> right, my love. Thanks very thanks much, so much. Hopefully, see you soon. See you soon. Take care, Joe. Bye. Bye, darling. Bye bye. bye, -bye.